Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today on the show, Nigerian government declares Cotonou University certificates invalid, must sack looms. Uh, that will be our first hot topic. And the second one is resident doctors begin seven-day warning strike uh, because of whatever is happening or what has happened to their colleague and what is happening in the entire nation, they are embarking on this seven-day warning strike. Of course, we'll be taking top trending issues uh, for today and then also we'll go to, we're going to be looking at the papers to see what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. In the meantime, we'll just take a, a breather and look at the code for today. Once again, good morning and welcome. Technology, like art, is the soaring exercise of the human imagination. Technology, like art, is the soaring exercise of the human imagination. That is according to Daniel Bell. Technology, like art, is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. It's self-explanatory and it tells you that human imagination can can lead to a lot of things that make life easy, make life more meaningful, make life more worth living. Uh, the question is, you don't have to say, because I'm not in the sciences, I don't have to exercise my mind. Because in the art, you exercise your mind and you exercise your imagination. In technology or in sciences, you exercise your mind, you exercise your imagination. It's that exercise of the mind that we're talking about today, which is very, very important. We're not looking at technology, we're not looking at art. We're looking at the fact that, or the question is, have you exercised your mind enough to be able to innovate uh, things into your life and into the society? Uh, that is what it will mean, because if you have a non-imaginative mind, as it were, it means that um, there is nothing creative that will come out of you. So whether you are uh, someone who loves the art, someone who loves nature, someone who loves anything in life, you have to be imaginative enough to be able to scale through in life. So we've seen what great things have come out of technology, we've seen what great things have come out of the arts, we've seen all of these being just the imagination of one person or the other. So how much are you exercising your mind to be creative enough to better your life and not just your life this time you can also better the lives of those around you so we challenge you this morning exercise your mind well enough so that you can innovate so that you can create and make this world a little bit better than when you met it when you were born okay today uh, nigeria's gdp surged by 3.2 percent in the second quarter of 2024 that's according to the national bureau of statistics that's what they said um, the agriculture sector experienced a positive growth of 1.41% in the second quarter of 2024, recovering from a decline of 1 point or minus 1.50% in the same quarter of 2023, while the industrial sector also showed improvement with a growth of 3.53%, up from minus 1.94% in the second quarter of 2023. Crude oil production increased to 1.4 million barrels per day in the second quarter of 2024, compared to 1.22 million barrels a year earlier, contributing to the overall economic growth. The nominal uh, GDP for the quarter was 60.93 trillion naira, reflecting a 16.94% year-on-year increase. Okay, it's always gladdening when we hear news that something has gone up. Uh, not inflation, or something uh, that 
seems like the fortunes of Nigeria. But all that is for financial experts to know whether that is an improvement in our economy or it's just something that we are calling or reeling out figures. Uh, how does that translate to making life meaningful for Nigerians? That's what the average Nigerian will be asking. They are not concerned about whether the GDP grew. They are not concerned about whether the external reserves grew. They are not concerned about whether anything, for that matter, grew. They are concerned about whether their um, cost of livelihood grew or it went down. Well, that's what Nigerians are um, thinking about. How much is a bag of rice? How much is a, a, a paint rubber of gari? How much is oil? How much is what they can eat? How much is rent? How can they pay? Where are they going to find a roof over their head? Where are they going to find food in their belly? That's what Nigerians are interested in. So whatever gains we're making in first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, or even the final quarter of the day, the year, let the people of Nigeria see a significant improvement, or at least, at least let us be made to see how in the nearest future we are going to gain from what is happening right now. It's not just enough to say uh, soon we will, the dividends will, be, will begin to reap the dividends of the policies that we are making. Whatever policy is being made, let us see the light that first month this is what has improved, second month this is what has improved. So we are being told that in 12 months something better will come. So we are expecting it because we are hopeful having seen the little things that have manifested. That's what the average Nigerian is concerned about. The second top trending issue is that the state governments have expressed concern at the last Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAAC, meeting over the federal government's decision to save additional revenue for the payment of the new 70,000 Naira minimum wage, which affected, which affected their revenue distribution. Several state finance commissioners, including those from Aqua Ibom, Delta, and Ekiti, questioned the move, arguing that the saved funds should be distributed to the states to alleviate their financial challenges rather than being held by the central government. The meeting also highlighted ongoing issues with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company uh, Limited, NNPCL, particularly regarding transparency and accountability in its operations, with states calling for more clarity on the company's financial dealings and its impact on the Federation account. Okay, this brings to question, uh, well, in my mind, maybe my mind is small, I don't know, but uh, if the federal government is withholding some of this money because of the 70,000 Naira minimum wage, will the federal government be the, ones to, uh, be the one to pay the state civil servants, the state people, uh, the people working in the state, are they not being paid by the state government? So why would the federal government reduce this money to keep because of the 70,000 Naira minimum wage. The federal government has its own responsibility to its federal workers. The state governments have their own responsibilities to their state workers. That is what I see. So why reduce the federal allocation due to the states uh, because you want to save for the 70,000 Naira minimum wage? Or is it the fear that the states might not pay and the federal government will take that responsibility an argument? I don't understand what that is. So I, I think whatever is due any state should be given to that state and that state should be held accountable if they cannot pay the minimum wage. Tell us that this is the figure we gave you and this is what you spend per year or per month and then you, sh you were supposed to be able to pay the minimum wage. And if there are going to be sanctions, let's know what those sanctions are and let everybody put their eyes, shine their eyes as we say in Nigeria on the state governments and see what they're doing with the ex uh, extra money that the federal government is giving to them. I don't think it's fair except there's a better explanation on how that money is going to be used for the benefit of the state. Otherwise, I see no reason why the federal government should reduce any money from any state to keep because of the 70,000 Naira minimum wage. Maybe there's a part of the story that I have not seen. But the, so far, what I have read, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense to me. Give the states, if it is 100 million, if it's 100 billion, if it's how, many, how much money that you want to give them, give it to them and make sure that they implement it. A committee has been set. The federal government, I think the committee was led by the secretary of the federal, federal government of Nigeria, um, so that they will make sure this implementation is done on the 70,000 Naira minimum wage. So is this part of the recommendations of the committee that the money should be kept uh, aside and then when the states pay the salaries and then they will augment? I don't even understand. But 
we should get a better explanation why monies would be reduced from the states. Monies that are supposed to be given to the states will be reduced into the federal government's coffers because of 70,000 naira minimum wage, which the state is supposed to pay. Okay, uh, a final one from uh, the top trending issues desk is that the federal government has enforced an 18-year age limit for students taking NECO and YEC exams, effective from next year. This policy is not new, but a reinforcement of existing rules, ensuring that only students who meet the required age and schooling years can sit for these exams. The age requirement also aligns with the 18-year minimum wage minimum age, rather, for the UTME administered by JAM. So, um, well, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm one of the advocates that think that uh, sometimes our children are taken to school too young. They have no time to learn other things, the basic skills, uh, to just be human beings, and then they're just uh, taken to school and a lot of things are crammed into their heads, you know. But if the minimum wage, or minimum age, why am I calling minimum wage? Anyway, it rhymes. If the minimum age is 18 years for WAEG and JAM and WASC and all that, what is the minimum or the, yeah, the minimum age to enter primary school? Shouldn't we start our laws from there? I don't know if this law covers that. Maybe they would say you have to be six years or you have to be 10 years before you can enter uh, primary one. Uh, like some of us in those days, we used to go to school when we were almost 10 years old. But if that law is not there and a child goes, goes to school and at, um, at 10, he has finished from, from, from primary school, let's say at 10 he has finished from primary school, then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, at 16 he's already uh, done with secondary school. Now, what happens between the 16 and the 18 years? Is there any program that will accommodate these people? Or everybody who goes to school fast will have to come and sit uh, two years before they can attempt to write, uh, write YEC, which is supposed to uh, be the end of your secondary school days? Or are they going to wait for two years, even if they s smuggle into writing YEC or something, are they going to wait for two years before they enter into uh, the university? Sometimes people write jam like three times, five times before they can get it. So at 18, you write jam five times, God forbid anyway, but that keeps you at 23. And then you enter into the university, and then when you finish, maybe there are so many strikes and you're finishing a five-year course in seven years or eight years, and then that means you're already 31. Uh, you look for a job. How many years does it take you to look for a job in Nigeria and get it? And then when you do find the job or you do find an advertisement for a job, they tell you that you have to be 18 years or 25 years and less. So if you're making laws, so how are you addressing these issues where uh, employers of labor will give you a, an age bracket that you are not even supposed to have finished from school by then, that you have to be that young? Sometimes they tell you you have to be uh, 25 years or younger with 10 years experience. All these things need to be addressed when we're talking about education. So let's look at the minimum age that you need to enter primary school because when everybody's talking about this minimum age, we're talking about university and YEC. We're leaving out primary school. So if someone gets into primary school and is fast enough, uh, you get to a particular age and then you get to a particular class, maybe SS3, and then you're not up to 18 years. You'll have to wait or keep repeating that class till 18 years. So we need to know how we, we, need, we will balance this. So if the law covers the fact that, okay, if you have to go to a nursery school, you go from this age to that age and all that, and then so that we know that by, by the time that you're supposed to finish secondary school, you're already 17 plus or you're 18 years uh, of age then that would be good enough. But what are we doing? Does this law also cover private institutions? Because if private institutions will take you, even without jam or something, uh, 
or the secondary schools will take you and they let you write YX. Some of them will falsify these and all that. And no, no, no consequences come to them. Then this law may not work at all. Now, when we're talking about children going to school, maybe from six years before they enter primary school, so that when they do six years in primary school, they are 12 already. Another six years in secondary school, they are 18 already, which should be the thing. Um, then what do you do to the parents? Because sometimes this parents take their children to school early because school also doubles as the caregivers to their kids. They can't take these kids to work. How many offices have nursery section or a, how do they call it, a, a place where nursing mothers can leave their kids, maybe bring their nannies to stay there with them so that they can suckle their babies or something? How many months is maternity leave again? How many, how, many, how many offices offer these services or offer the conducive atmosphere for nursing mothers to thrive at their job and still take care of their babies? So all these things need to be addressed. It's not just enough for me. It's not just enough saying that you have to be 18 years. Because if my child can have access to school early enough and then finishes primary school before 10 or at 10, and takes another six years in secondary school and finishes that one, um, he will not finish, it will get to 16 years, and then he has to wait two years before YEC is written and all that. We need to know everything that is covered by this law so that we can make some inputs. But otherwise, enforcing this law will be very difficult. And it also will, might make us um, have more people jack buying, that's, that's the word now in Nigeria, to other countries. Now they're talking about banning certificates and sacking people who obtain certificates from other countries. But other countries make it easy for you to enter because they have an internal examination that they give you within this, uh, the, the school community. And then if you pass it, then you get admission into that school. You don't need your jump. You don't need anything else. You just have to show that you were able to finish secondary school. So if you finish secondary school in a private institution that has maybe falsified something or maybe done one, uh, what it, what's the word we use on the street, magu magu, to make sure that you write your YEC, then you're going to get admission elsewhere and we are losing that money. So is the law holistic enough? If it is, bravo. If it is not holistic enough, some of the points I've raised, look at them and let's see. It's not too late to say, okay, let's withdraw a little bit and make sure that everything is addressed from when the child enters nursery to primary to secondary school and what happens if there's a transition period that the person has to uh, undergo and what happens to the parents who need to leave their children in school just because these schools are the ones uh, that take care of them in kindergarten, in whatever crash that they say. So these people are babysitters, and because of that, the transition from being babysitters into um, educationists, people that will impart the knowledge in the children. So let's look at all these things and make sure that our law can be enforced. Otherwise, well, it's a see don't look kind of thing that we'll be doing. Well, that's it for Top Trending Issues. We'll take a breather. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us.